All right, so thanks, Gabriel, for showing how to, or the platform Deus and how it works. And now I'm going to show you how to set up your own platform on DigitalOcean, which is one of the easiest ways to do it. And here's a bit about me. My name is Mitchell Anikas, also known as Manicus at DigitalOcean. Uh, I'm a technical writer at DigitalOcean, so I write these articles such as the ones you see up there. And uh, you know, we write about anything pretty much that's open source. And I'm, yeah, I have a background in system administration. So uh, I'm also the in-office Street Fighter champion. So if you, yeah, thank you. So if you guys uh, feel like it, come and challenge me at DigitalOcean. And my email address is manicus at DigitalOcean. Twitter, this is Mitch. All right, so why would you use this on DO? Well, because we started, in a, we integrated CoreOS as a native integration, uh, I think September 5th, which is like about two months ago. So it's really easy to deploy uh, CoreOS droplets. And you know, obviously, with this, you get full control of your servers. And it's, DigitalOcean is really cost effective, so that's usually a plus for people. And it's really easy to set up. And in fact, it's so easy, I'm going to show you in this presentation. Uh, so these are kind of the prerequisites that you need before you get started. Uh, you need a DigitalOcean account, and you need to be able to spin up at least three machines uh, just to form a cluster. And the size of the droplet, as long as it's bigger than two gigabytes per server, then that's good. And you need a wildcard domain setup and applications to run. So here's pretty much the checklist that we're going to run through. And it looks like a lot, but it's actually really fast and easy. So the first step is to get the DS Cloud config. And now this is available on the the DS GitHub repo. And basically, if you've ever deployed a CoreOS server before, then you know that you need a cloud config file. And what this does is it tells the servers, like, you know, we're part of this cluster, and these are the services that need to run for the cluster to work. And the uh, DS cloud config has some additional uh, services that get started in addition to, like, just the regular CoreOS setup. And you can see that here. So. The version, the current version is 15, or 0 0.15. When I wrote this uh, presentation, it was based on the 0.14.1 release, so it might be a little different, but we'll see. Actually, I, ha I have a, I saved the old user data, so. Okay, so now that we have the user data, the next step is to get the discovery URL, and now this is part of what you need to put into the user data, cloud config. So there's a service that is uh, provided by CoreOS, and it's called discovery.etcd.io. And basically, if you go to this URL, then you get this discovery token. Now, this token is used to identify servers that belong to a cluster. So if I go to that URL right now, then I see that, oh, there's something in there. but when I add servers to the cluster, you'll see entries in there, like additional entries uh, with fingerprints of the servers. So I'm going to use this discovery key and put it into my user data. So that's so now I'm prepped to start my or spin up some DigitalOcean droplets. So I'm going to copy this user data and I'm going to use it in a, just a second. Um, the next step is to create three CoreOS droplets, at least three. You can do more if you want. So I'm going to this cool website called digitalocean.com. <laughs> uh, so yeah, basically, you just click Create. And uh, you can also do this through the API uh, if, you know, if you really want to automate things. I'm going to create a four gigabyte. Oh, I'll make it bigger so you can. Oh, it's huge. OK. So. Uh, I'm going to use a four gigabyte server and use the NYC3 region, private networking, 
and enable user data. So this is where I paste in the, the cloud config file that I prepared earlier. And this basically, oh, I'll show you in a second. So, and I select CoreOS as the distribution and add an SSH key. So, click create and the droplet is being created. So, if you don't know, droplet is another word for cloud server and that's like our main product. So, it's created. That was quick. Okay. I'm not impressed. It's usually quicker. Uh. <laughs> Anyway, so basically you create three of these. And I would do that for the presentation, but I didn't know like it was going to be so fast. So I already have a, a, you know, three servers prepared. And then the last, or not the last thing, the next step is to have a DNS set up. Uh, what I'm going to do is, so these are my domains that I own. It's cock cockroach.nyc. So. Kind of a weird one. Uh, so I'm going to use this as Mitch, because that's my, my cool domain. So I actually already created the domain records, because it takes time for this to propagate. Um, what I'm doing here is I set up a CNAME on the top level domain, or on the domain, this is Mitch. And this allows, uh, it's basically like a wildcard entry. And each, uh, host. These are the I public IP addresses of each host. And I basically set it up this way so it will be set up like a uh, round robin load balance load, uh, DNS. And also I put in records just so I can refer to each node individually. Um, so that's the DNS setup. So all right, so the next step is to install the command line tools. I actually did this already, but uh, I'll show you guys how it works. So on my terminal, oh, oops. Hello, okay. So can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Was I just like super loud right before this? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I already have it installed, uh, but you can run these commands. Basically, there are these scripts. Oh, I'll just make it bigger. So Deus provides these uh, scripts, install scripts that you can run, and you just pass in the version of Deus that you want to, or the, uh, the version of the com command line tool that you want to install. And generally, you want it to be, I think, as long as it's higher than the actual uh, installation, then it should work fine. So there's a tool called Deus CTL, which Gabriel was talking about earlier. And there's another tool called Deus, which is the command line interface. So Deus CTL is the first uh, piece of this puzzle. So since we have three CoreOS machines running, I'll show you my droplets. There's a lot of them. Uh, I just created this one. I'm actually using these three right here. So if if we do an NS lookup on this is Mitch, I see that these IP addresses match. So that's good. So uh, the first step is to add a, make sure your SSH agent is started. Oops. This is kind of boring, but necessary. All right, so now in order to uh, tell DSCTL how to communicate with the cluster, that hasn't, the platform hasn't been started yet. Um, it's just, they're just like core OS machines basically right now. So I'm going to export this uh, environment variable called DSCTL underscore tunnel. And I'll point it to DS1 dot, this is Mitch, the domain that we set up. So now when I run DS CTL, it will kind of run against that machine that we, one of the machines that we just uh, deployed. So now before we actually install the platform, we have to set up some uh, configuration. This is recent, 
So, so we're going to add the SSH key. There you go. Something. That's, that's some kind of. I don't actually know what that is. So, because uh, <laughs> I actually I, I ran through this yesterday and it changed a little bit. So, they didn't actually figure it out yet. So, but you need to do that step. I know that much. All right. So, now we need to set the domain, and I'm using this is Mitch. So, put it in there, and then. Now we can run this command, dsctl install platform. All right, so it's basically loading these containers that uh, make up the platform. So you'll have the control plane and the data plane, as you can see. So these are the containers that Gabriel was talking about. And it just takes, this part just takes like, um, I mean, 10 seconds, maybe. Uh, so. And then to start it up, you just do this control start platform. And then this takes a little while, like maybe a couple minutes. So I have another thing prepared. It's great. Uh, another cluster prepared that's already started. So as you can see, this is what it looks like when it's starting. It's not too exciting, but um, let's see. One more page. All right, so now I'm going to wait a second. Oh, yeah. OK. So I'm going to switch over to that other uh, cluster. I have it set up under my MitchellAnikas.com domain. All right, so if I do a Deus CTL, list. This is what it looks like when all the containers are started up and active. So this active means it's running, or actually running means it's running. So uh, next step is to register an admin user. There we go. So I, I skipped through steps five and six, but so now we're on step seven. Register an admin user. So you just you know tell DS to register against uh, the platform. So we refer to it as DS dot the domain dot com. Oops. And it asks for a username, so I'll call it DS. And the password I'll just say is password. That's a good password uh, for security. So all right. So I just have to oh. Oops. Put in my email address. Already, already did that. Already created a user that called that. Oops. So anyway, if you, if you uh, didn't have the user created already, then it would have a success message. So now the platform is set up and ready to use pretty much. So that was great. So let's look at the, uh, the apps that are running right now. There aren't any apps running because we just created it. So let's look at deploying some apps. So as mentioned earlier, there are three ways to deploy apps. Like there's the Heroku build pack flow, which is like a DS, you just do like git push to the DS master remote. And then uh, there are Docker files, which is a similar flow. And you can also use Docker images. And here are some example apps. I think I'll go with, I'll show you guys how to use the Docker images. So this app here, or this image, is basically like a web server. And you'll see what happens when I deploy it. So uh, to deploy this app, I'll just go to like a, an empty directory. Oops. And now I do a DS create to create an application. And it's going to use the name of the directory that I'm in because it's a blank directory. Um, and then you do a DS pull, and then the username 
on Docker Hub, or you can use other registries, but uh, Deus pull, so Deus, and then slash the name of the app. So example go. So now it's pulling in the image to our cluster, and it will start the application automatically. This typically is very quick, so we'll see how it should go pretty soon. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so as soon as that's finished, oh, it's done now. OK, so now we can look at the uh, application by going to, I mean, you could curl this, but I'll just show you in a browser. The name of the app, and then the domain in a web browser. So all this, all this app does is, uh, it's a web server that says powered by Ideas. And you know, you can, I can show you a few other things, like um, how to configure the app. So you can change the environment variables through the Deus tool. Uh, so I'll run Deus config set, and then there's a, an environment variable called powered by. And I can say it's powered by Deus on DigitalOcean at this meetup or something. Uh, so if I run this, it's going to redo the Docker layers. And basically, it's going to change the variable, and the app will read from that as soon as it's done. And it will say, powered by Deus on DigitalOcean at this meetup. So that's pretty cool. And then also, if you notice, there's this uh, Deus release that pops up in the output. So we can actually look at the uh, versions. Uh, I think it's revisions. Oh, no. Oh, releases. So you can see all the different versions that, of this app that we went through. So if we wanted to, uh, oh, let me show you scaling first. So uh, there's a scale command. So Scaling in Deus, I think it works like if, you, if your app is like a, using a, the 12 factor methodology, then you can do like horizontal scaling that way. So this is just a simple web server, so it should work fine. And then CMD3. So CMD basically just says uh, run this container three times without any arguments. So it's scaling, and basically when this is done, then we'll have like three different containers that are running this app. So uh, here we have, on the bottom, you can see all the processes that are running this application. Uh, so now if we, like if I curl this, oops. So I curl it a bunch of times. And look at the logs. Then I see that, well, these are the private IP addresses of all the uh, servers. And basically, it's running on the different, well, actually, not all of them are the servers, but these 10.132.252 and 224 servers are um, the, actually the core OS machines that we created. So we can see that, in fact, uh, the process is scaled to three different servers. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so looking at the releases again, we see that there's the three releases. And if we want to do a rollback, we can do that easily. Just go DS rollback v2. And if you remember, we, you know, this is the environment variable right now. So as soon as this is done, it will roll back to just saying part by DS. And let's see. I guess that's pretty much it for like setting up the cluster and provisioning your own platform. So do you have any questions at this time? Thank you. Oh, yeah.
So yeah, right. The way I set it up was I used the DNS, like a round robin DNS load balancing, which is, I mean, this is good for like playing around with it. So, but yeah, uh, I think you'd want to have a known entry point and have like a load balancer that points to the different uh, machines. Yeah. Anyone else? So actually, I'll show you the uh, the logs. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, the question was when I scaled the uh, pro or the application, did it just run more containers on the same machine, or did it go across different machines? So uh, after I scaled up, then I curled the app, or I basically accessed the app a bunch of times. And if you look in the logs, uh, these get logs right here, they have the different IP addresses of the different nodes. So it was scaled across the different machines. And I mean, that's all handled by the scheduler. So I don't, you know, if you had more nodes, then you, you know, you could scale more and it would spread across more nodes. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes? Uh, yeah, so basically, to deploy with a different method. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. The question was could you demonstrate how to deploy the app uh, with using one of the other flows? So I used the Docker image flow, and basically, if you're using a Docker file, then all you have to do is uh, you, you know, just go to you get the Docker file, and then you do a git push ds master instead of a ds pool. And it pretty much just builds it and runs it. So it's the same, similar process uh, from the user's standpoint. Uh, anyone else? Uh, I think, well, I've read that the Docker files and the Docker images method, you can only expose one port at this time, and uh, it, it's limited to HTTP processes. Uh, does that answer your question? Oh, sorry, I didn't repeat the question, but whatever. Anyway, <laughs> next question. <laughs> yeah. The question was, uh, do you have examples of deploying apps that aren't simple web servers? Uh, actually, it's funny that you asked that because Bacon Gobbler, or Matt Fisher, as he's also known as, uh, he's talking next, and he's going to present um, like a more complex app and kind of best practices with this. So I think my timing was perfect. I don't know. So that's pretty much it. And it's a nice picture. Oh, wait. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so uh, I, can, I can touch the mic now. One last thing is I wanted to sh give a shout out to the DigitalOcean community, because that's who I work for. And basically, we write tutorials on like, all these different things, like CoreOS, Deus, Mesosphere, like, all these clustering cool technologies that you are going to hear about like, now and in the future. So, um, and we also cover like, more basic topics, so check it out. And that's the end of my presentation. So thank you.